Hi everybody, Bobby from the Rabbitry Center, and today we're going to talk about the four reasons why I think everybody should be raising rabbits, especially if they're meat eaters. And we're going to talk about costs, we're going to cover a little bit of history, how this all started with farming rabbits, and I think you're really going to enjoy it. Here we go. Number one, rabbit meat. That is the, the main reason why I have rabbits, and I know the Rabbitry Center over the last five years has turned into selling most of our rabbits, but we always have rabbit meat. And I, I understand if eating rabbits is tough to swallow for some, no pun intended, but uh, it's because I'm married to a woman who raised rabbits as a kid. And you know, if, if you want to be a vegetarian because that makes you feel good, I think you should eat the food that makes you feel good. But I, you know, I love different beers. I love different meats. Even though they make an awesome companion, you know, I sell my rabbits. I sell rabbits to a lot of families, and they call me back and tell me how fast the rabbits made friends with the dog and the cat. And they come when they're called, and now the rabbits are litter trained. And let's face it, they're incredibly cute. Okay, but that doesn't change the fact that rabbits, since the beginning of time have been feeding the world. They've been introduced to the wild all over the world and they've been balancing ecosystems and habitats, helping habitats. Well, this got started in Iberia. Romans are conquering, they get to Spain, started farming rabbits. You know, later on history shows medieval monks even kept rabbits in cages for food. And that, well, that's because of Lent. Um, they were there fasting and would eat rabbit meat, baby rabbits, I know that's brutal, because it wasn't considered meat at the time. But yeah, that's how things got started. You know, trade started all over the world by land and sea and rabbits. They were introduced to every continent in the world except uh, Antarctica. And, you know, being able to evade and thrive and reproduce at a high rate, uh, they did just fine. You know, then the industrial evolution took off and people moved from the country into towns. They took their rabbits with them and they, you know, because they knew that meant two, three hundred pounds of meat a year, but then as the markets got bigger, this is the, the evolution of, of meat. You know, uh, they stopped having to f farm so much in their backyard. They would just go to the store, as you know, you know, Tyson and everything, and you know, Whole Foods. Even Whole Foods had rabbits on the menu, but they caught so much heat. I think it was 2008, or uh, right around there, but they caught so much heat from um, pet organizations that they just said, you know what, it's not worth it, let's just take it off the menu but it's, it's because they recognized what an amazing livestock animal rabbits are. You know, being able to produce, um, you know, small amounts of feed in small areas, and they don't take a lot of space. So, you know, you can feed a rabbit uh, the same amount of food as you can a cow. A cow will produce one pound of steak. A rabbit will produce six pounds of rabbit meat. And, you know, it's, it's an amazing thing. They, they are, it's a delicious, lean, meat. I mean, it's incredibly good for you. It comes in around 8% fat, whereas cattle come in around 32% in pork. Uh, lamb, I think, is a little less than that. It's like right around 28%. So you can't, you just, you can't deny the fact that rabbits, in my heart, it seems like it's, a, it's an injustice to not farm rabbits. People should be producing rabbit meat on their property if they're a meat eater. Um, so I can't recommend it enough, and it's delicious. I mean, what's it taste like? It tastes like chicken, but it has more of a wild, like earthy taste. And uh, you know, it's just like it's, just, it's none of those. It's not a meat like venison where um, you, if you cook it wrong, it's gonna taste. You know, like with venison, it's it's a lean meat, and if you overcook it past medium rare, especially at past medium, it's gonna taste livery and dry, and it's not gonna be as good. A lot of people, most people are cooking venison wrong. Um, it needs to be cooked medium rare. It's delicious. I recommend it. Take five minutes out of your life and just try medium rare venison. It's amazing. Now with rabbit meat, you just want to cook it till it hits 160 degrees and it's, it'll be tender and delicious. And, uh, and, and you'll love it. Try it. You won't regret it. Just because one of our farm animals make a great pet, that doesn't mean we should stop farming them. It just means that everybody can enjoy these animals on all different levels. And, you know, sadly, there's only a handful of countries that still have rabbits on the menu. And um, I believe, I mean, we're talking like six or seven. It's, it's uh, France, Italy, Venezuela, North Korea, uh, 
Egypt, Spain, and China. You know, rabbits are a delicious, amazing animal to produce, and I recommend it. I can't recommend it enough. We do all our homestead activities on just a few acres. So I needed an animal that wasn't gonna take up a lot of room, but could still have a good production that wasn't going to cost a lot of money. And I, so number two, number two is definitely money. All you have to do is just sell a few rabbits. And that's how everything started for us. You know, I mean, well, for one, my dog wasn't a very good rabbit hunter. And two, uh, I just happened to sell a rabbit to a neighbor. And then I sold a rabbit to another neighbor. I sold one to a friend at work. In a matter of time, you know, my marketing got a little bit better. And we started getting so many calls that we don't even have to put ads out anymore. Uh, there's a lot of people out there wanting to farm rabbits. There's a lot of people out there wanting to show rabbits or, or make the perfect rabbit for shows. Uh, there's a lot of people that um, just want to have a, a family pet. And so one rabbit, even if it's a meat rabbit or a mutt, you can sell those for and you don't even have to have a bother with a pedigree or anything. You a 50 pound bag of 16% protein rabbit pellet. That's that is comfortably a month of feed. If you sell pedigrees, pedigrees showing the genetic uh, bloodline of the animal, how you got there with the color and everything, If you, you can charge more. Um, some rabbits you can sell for $100 to $200, depends on what kind of breed you have. But I don't charge extra for the pedigree, it's included, and um, that's two bags of feed. You know, if we sell three, four rabbits in one sale, you're talking, I mean, that's a cage, a feeder, a water bottle. So yes, these rabbits don't cost any money. Number three, rabbit manure. Rabbit manure is the best. It's a cold manure and it can be added directly onto anything. We blanket our raised beds every year with rabbit manure. It's full of phosphorus and nitrogen and it breaks down really fast. You can add it to your chicken coops. The chickens, it's full of like insects and, and worms and it's you know, beneficial insects for your chickens. Um, so they get a scoop every day. Uh, you also can add it directly onto whatever you want. Plants, trees, anything. And um, you don't have to worry about it if it's soaked with urine or not. You don't necessarily have to build a setup to try to get the urine away from your manure. I've never seen a negative reaction with urine soaked manure. I mean, it's it's called black gold, brown gold, bunny gold, bunny berries for a reason, because it's an, it's an amazing super manure. You know, being a cold manure, you don't have to compost it like you do, uh, you know, horse manure, chicken manure. You put that stuff on your plants, it'll destroy your plants because it has to cool down. So also, you can sell rabbit manure. You know, going back to number two reason, money, I mean, you can sell, you can basically take your feed bags, put the rabbit manure in the feed bags, and sell the feed bags for five bucks. You know, I, I heard people give their rabbit manure away. Unless you're giving it away to friends and family, stop that. Sell it. Put it out front like you would your wood, like, like we do our wood bundles, and just put a sign on it that says five dollars. Not everybody will buy it, but a lot of people will because they know how amazing rabbit manure is. I mean, if you, if you put rabbit manure into a bucket, well, first drill holes, pilot holes into the bucket, you know, like just like a 5 16 or something. Put that bucket in another bucket and throw some rabbit manure in there. You can either pour water through that or you can just let that, we let the rain water, which is even better, soak through so whenever we need a, to give a plant a boost we just pull the top bucket out and we take that bucket of all natural organic fertilizer and it is like jet fuel for anything that you want to give a boost to you can you can take a big scoop of your rabbit manure and give it to your chickens every day it's packed with uh, you know red wigglers love uh, rabbit manure it's packed with beneficial insects they'll go through it and scratch through it uh, so whatever you do don't give it away unless it's say it's Mother's Day or something um, so that, that's what I did I gave my mother-in-law uh, a couple bags of rat because she's an awesome gardener and uh, she really appreciated it 
It was it, was, it makes great gift and it also makes a, an, a terrific addition to any property that grows food and uh, enjoys growing anything. So we've talked about how the meat is amazing. We talked about how they pay for themselves. We talked about how the manure benefits everything that you grow and the number four reason is because it is incredibly easy to produce hundreds of pounds of meat and they're, it's delicious. We're talking about a lean, tasty, healthy meat that does all those things for your property. You know, and we didn't even talk about hides, the, the terrific furs that you can make when, uh, when you get into that. And I, I want to put a video out here in the near future. Let me know down in the comments if you would like to see that video. Um, because, boy, that's a whole nother, you know, I could have made a video on nine different reasons why rabbits are a good thing. But I, I just wanted to put this out to maybe hopefully nudge you in the right direction to make your own meat production in your backyard. Um, I can't recommend it enough. 15 minutes in the morning, 15 minutes at night, and uh, that's enough time to take care of a lot of rabbits. So if you have any questions, uh, please leave them down in the comments below, and I'll try to answer you. Uh, if you have any concerns about you know, running a rabbitry or starting a rabbitry, I'll gladly answer everybody as fast as possible. Um, hey I hope you, enjoyed, I hope the you enjoyed the video. Be sure to let me know if there's a topic or a video you'd like covered. I probably could have made a video on 12 reasons why I think you should be raising rabbits, but um, those are the four main. And I know I made money number two, and, and most people would not say that, but I really, that's a big deal to me. I, I wouldn't want or I wouldn't recommend people take on rabbits if they were going to cost you a lot of money. And they'll, they'll pay for themselves. I, I think you will enjoy it and your life will definitely be better with rabbits. So please, if you have any questions or comments, please leave those and I'll try to get back to everybody as soon as possible. And until next time, we'll see you on the next video.